as Adobe adds more and more tools uh, into Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw, I think it can be a little confusing, you know, which ones should we use? And I found that just personally in my own photography with the difference between saturation and then the point color adjustment, which is relatively new. It's not brand new, but it's relatively new. And it's also got saturation in it. So I started wondering, like if I, if I took my masking tools and I selected an area that was red, and I wanted to adjust the colors inside of that area, what, what tools should I be using? Saturation or point color? Um, and that really got me to dive into this photo. We're gonna see our, the, this video, because you're gonna see a geeky example and then some creative examples. And specifically, I can even give you a spoiler alert. You know, you select red and you crank the saturation up to 100%. 100% saturation of one specific color is 100%. You're not gonna see the difference there. Or I think you'll really find the interesting thing in this video is all the different variations of the colors, okay? So when we have a, a, an area of red, let's say in a sky, it's not all the same red. We've got darker reds, we've got brighter reds, and that's really where I learned a lot by playing around with some of these tools, and uh, I hope you will as well. Now, I, I often, when I'm doing tests like this, I often do it on a really boring image at first because it lets me it lets me separate out the photo and lets me just really see what's going on, okay? And what I learned from this, I'm always able to take the other photos. And don't forget, we're gonna go into masking here and uh, the tools that we use inside of masking will be uh, some version of uh, saturation, which will come open in that color panel and then also the point color. Okay, and so all of these are in both versions of Lightroom as well as Adobe Camera Raw. So no matter what you're using, you'll be able to, to, to take what we, we say here and use it across all Adobe Raw apps. Now, uh, this is the no change version. The first thing I did is I went to the masking tool and I made a mask and I just made a circular mask over the whole thing. And I cranked up, we can go in our masking panel here, and I cranked up the saturation to 100, all right? Then I took that down, I reset it. I went, I made the same mask, and then I opened up the point color. I set the saturation down to zero. I opened up point color and took the eyedropper, and then I just moved the eyedropper over a part of the photo here. Okay, just drop it down. And then I went and I just cranked up the saturation for that color. Now we can only do eight points on here, so, it, you're, you're never gonna find an exact test that scientifically does all this. And I don't care because all I wanna do is from a very, very high level, I don't care about the numbers, I don't care about the science, I just wanna understand a little bit more about what's going on between these two tools. And I think you'll be able to get that from what we do here. So let's go in here and uh, just update what I just did there so it's on there. So now we've got our, our no change version and then we'll go to saturation. Okay, so this is 100% saturation, this is no change. 100% saturation and then no change. So I'd ask you, you know, as you're looking at what, what differences do you see in here? Of course we know these are the saturated colors on the outside, okay? As we get in toward the middle, what you're getting are lighter versions. If you think of luminance, these are darker, these are lighter. So, so as we get in toward the middle, just because the color's lighter, in, in, in luminance, it's going to look not as saturated to us as some of these darker colors will look to us. But of course, everything gets more saturated between the no change version and 100% saturation. Now, what I also start to see is that on certain colors, the reds, some of the oranges, some of the yellows, on certain colors, we we start to lose the perception of some of these different color, I'll call it um, luminance levels inside there. And some of them almost start to blend together. So again, especially in the reds, yellows, orange area, which would actually track with what we know about some of the color adjustments that we have here inside of Lightroom. Here's a perfect example, because we have vibrance and saturation. Vibrance is what we always tell people, use if you want to boost colors on portraits, because it'll tend to leave skin, to skin tones alone, which where those skin tones fall into some of these areas, where saturation is gonna blast color at everything, and there's times where you want that, and there's times where you don't. So that actually tracks with what we already know about this stuff, which is when you look at saturation, we lose some 
of the delineation in some of these areas here. Um, and that's because saturation's really going hard into the, the, the reds, the oranges, and the, the yellows inside of there. Okay, so we've got that. Now let's go to our point color version. Okay, so now we have point color versus only saturation. By the way, point color doesn't include a 100% saturation. I zeroed that one out. So the only saturation adjustments with our point color mask in here is going to be all the individual colors that I dropped and I just hit, took the saturation shift and cranked it up to 100 for each one of those colors there. So what this is telling us as we look at it is look at with saturation and then look at point color. In some of these colors, I'm able to really take the brighter, more illuminated versions of the color and almost push those to a saturation level that's close to the darker, more saturated colors. So this will be a good, actually a good experimentation too. Let me go in here. Let's get rid of, let's get rid of one of the, let's get rid of one of the reds. I'll just right click and choose delete swatch. I'm going to add another one into the blue here. So you can even see, because I wasn't able to, again, we only have eight swatches that we're able to do here. So I wasn't able to do all the colors, but you can see it's almost starting to disappear. Some of the color variances between the dark version on the outside and the bright version on the inside, we're starting to lose some of those, those variations in there. So that's telling me that point color, at, especially at some of those higher saturation levels, is really a tool for pushing a lot of saturation into a color, almost regardless of how bright or dark it is. Now you do have some options down here. You've got range, which can help a little bit if you if you cheat that range more toward the left hand side, which is going to be shadows, you'll start to notice your brighter colors become more visible and less blended into the other ones. And as you cheat that range toward the right side, which is your highlights, you'll start to notice some of those brighter colors all merge together more. Okay, but overall, what I could say is before we jump to another photo and I, or a photo and actually see what it does overall, I would say Point color is definitely a stronger version in, in just about every way than just the saturation adjustment. Uh, speaking about strong versions of things, I've got a very strong version of a Lightroom course that <laughs> I think uh, sometimes I can't even keep a straight face when I, I think of how I segue into my little sales videos, but uh, I'm only going to take about uh, 45 seconds here. Um, if you're interested in Lightroom, which you are because you're, you're watching this video, uh, I've got my Lightroom system course. So this course is really meant for somebody more as a beginner, somebody that's starting out with Lightroom and really can't make heads or tails or anything. So we start off from the basics of how to organize your photos, where to put your photos, which is so important to figure out before you even open up Lightroom. It's one of the more important decisions you can make. But then we talk about importing, organizing your photos, looking through them, all the different ways we can do that, cataloging, go into all the develop stuff, a lot of advanced develop stuff, even working with Photoshop. And then we take a look at all the different modules across Lightroom and how to use those. I even got a, a little catalog section in there because it's a very popular question. So if you have catalog questions, it's probably one of the more popular sections in the course. So I hope you'll swing by and check it out. It is on sale right now. And uh, if you're looking to learn all the aspects of what Lightroom Classic can do for you, uh, I think that course is really one of the best ways that you can go. All right, so now let's uh, go take a look at a photo here. And let's, uh, let's look at one with some sky colors in it. And I did something pretty similar to what we did before, okay? So uh, I went under here, I just created a mask of the sky. And so how would we, how would we go about editing this? Well, I could go in here and I could crank up the saturation. All right. And as we would expect, it's not pushing those blues as much as it's pushing some of those reds and oranges and yellows. Okay. It's not pushing some of those uh, purples and blues that we have up here quite as much, but it is making the, 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 the reds, oranges, and yellows look almost radioactive. It's a bad Crayola crayon box inside of there. So it's definitely pushing some color inside of there. Again, these are way too high levels, but looking at these really high levels allows us to, to see what's going on more so that we can be a little bit more, uh, a little bit, have a little bit more finesse when we're actually really doing it at some of these lower levels. What I would say from this is point color 
Well, now I'm able to go in here and maybe actually just click on a specific color and then just boost that color alone. Go click on another color. Maybe we'll go click on some of these reds and oranges over on the left and just boost some of the colors in there. And a little goes a long way. And we learned that when we saw the differences between point color and saturation, right? I had even said that at the end of looking at that color wheel, that point color is a more intense version of pushing color into something than our saturation adjustment is. So a little goes a long way here, so I would never go up that high with it, but we can push a little bit more color in here. Another thing to consider is on the yellows. I, I think we can get radioactive really fast with the yellows, but sometimes, and what's nice about point color is that a luminance shift can help. So sometimes not making it more colorful, but even making it a little bit more brighter can be a good way to go. And I'll even do one more up here toward the blues and the purples and push some color. Well, that's way too much. Push some color up into those areas too. So it's gonna be subtle before after I could probably even pull back a little bit more on all those and maybe instead do do what I had mentioned before. Maybe instead just make those areas a little bit brighter, and not necessarily more saturated in color. I'll show you one more example here. And this will really encapsulate what some of the differences are or what one, I, I should say, I wanna, whether you wanna call it benefit or difference, but we can look at point color and then we look at the saturation version. And specifically, I'd like you to hone in at the bottom here and on some of these reds, some of these dull reds around here, look at what point color can do. Look at what saturation did. Point color, saturation, which again, remember back to that color wheel. And I remember, especially with point color, we saw a lot of the reds and the oranges start to disappear from bright, from the darker, more saturated reds to the lighter, more saturated reds, we saw, we saw them all disappear in a way, which means it's really attacking those areas. So here we have point color where we're able to get more color into some of these muted reds and saturation, even at 100% with saturation, I wasn't able to push those reds to that point there. So there's definitely a difference, I would say, 100% saturation in a red is going to be the same between the two, but it's more about what colors the, you know, what specific shades that some of these adjustment sliders are attacking when you do that. I don't think the saturation is necessarily better or worse. And hopefully it goes without saying, it's all too much for what I did to this photo. I was just showing you that you got to look at this stuff at some of those higher levels to really better understand what it would do when you're trying to edit it in a little bit more of a finessed way um, and something that doesn't look you know, insanely overcolored. Also, while you're here, it sounds like you're interested in color because we just talked a lot about color. Uh, I've got another video that I did a while back, but still very applicable today because it uses tools that are still inside of Lightroom today. Uh, it's called Complete Color Control. So if you're looking for another way that you can start to approach color and just a different take on it, that'd be a great video to go check out next.